As Israel's relentless airstrikes continues into the third week, the humanitarian crisis is worsening in the Gaza Strip, home to nearly two million people and one of the most densely populated places on Earth. A humanitarian zone has finally been created in Gaza South, allowing in international aid, but it looks far from sufficient to meet the basic needs of thousands that have already been displaced. To provide us with a better understanding of the situation in Gaza, we're now joined by Juliet Tuma, spokesperson of the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees in the Near East. Thank you so much for joining us, Ms. Tuma. Thank you, Lena. So let's begin with the current situation in Gaza. The death toll in the Gaza Strip is climbing by hundreds each day with more than 2,000 children already reported dead. Can you tell us about the current situation in the Gaza Strip? The situation in the Gaza Strip is um, terrible. I don't think that um, UNRWA, the UN Palestine Refugee Agency, has the right words that would do any justice to the suffering of civilians on the ground in in the Gaza Strip. Um, the war has been ongoing for nearly 18 days now with huge losses. Uh, we have endured human losses, including 35 of our colleagues who have been confirmed killed uh, in Gaza since the war began. Uh, UNRWA is currently sheltering 600,000 people in uh, more than 150 shelters um, in mostly schools that we used uh, before the war to educate at least 300,000 children uh, in, in, in the Gaza Strip. It's getting worse by the hour, by the hour. According to reports, we've also seen that 12 out of 32 hospitals in Gaza is shut down, of course, due to the ongoing Israeli airstrikes. The 20 hospitals in operation are nearly their breaking point. Some reports suggesting that patients are undergoing surgery with limited anesthesia, while medical staff are literally running out of material to cover the deceased with. Could you describe the medical crisis in the region? Yes, we have also received reports from our teams in Gaza that body bags, body bags are running out in Gaza. Medical supplies are running out in our own clinics, which, by the way, are only at a third uh, of, of the capacity, a third operational capacity. We are also running out of medicine, basic medicine, including insulin, as one example. The supplies that uh, need to come in, need to come in of a uh, regular basis, on a regular basis. Uh, they need to flow on a regular basis. We need um, supplies urgently. We need to increase the number of supplies that are coming in. And we need to have a faster humanitarian lifeline for people in need inside the Gaza Strip. Uh, much needed international aid actually began entering uh, Gaza. Dozens of trucks delivered water, food, medical supplies into the region, but it does look like far from enough. And as you've highlighted, it needs to happen regularly, not in these limited quantities. Uh, WHO's emergency chief, Michael Ryan, also called it a drop in the ocean of need. Based on your observation, is it only providing limited help to the stranded Gazans? Well, I agree with Dr. Ryan. He is absolutely right. We had just uh, just over 60 trucks in the past four days. That's uh, uh, peanuts. It's crumbs. It's um, not enough. And uh, we need to have more of those convoys. We need to have more trucks on those convoys. We need to have uh, more fuel or we need to have fuel to begin with, because mm -hmm. these convoys did not have any fuel on them. Uh, coming into the Gaza Strip. Uh, there has not been one liter of fuel delivered into the Gaza Strip since the war began on the 7th of October. Uh, delivering aid into this region in the middle of a war is tricky, uh, even lethal, um, bound by existing limits. Uh, the WHO warned that there are no security guarantees for deliveries to the northern part of the Gaza Strip. H how is the UNRWA dealing with the security issues? Look, Lena, no place is safe in the Gaza Strip. No place. There are two million people living in the Gaza Strip even before the war began. Gaza was under a blockade. Um, people in Gaza depended very, very much on humanitarian assistance anyway. For example, 1.2 million people received food assistance from UNRWA. 
Um, so it's uh, it was already a very dire humanitarian situation. The siege and the war made a very, very bad situation far, far worse. Hmm. Uh, Hamas is reportedly negotiating with Israel to free Israeli hostages in return for fuel supply, something you said is of urgent need in the Gaza Strip. Uh, are you hopeful that the hostage release for fuel deal will secure fuel supply into Gaza and perhaps include more aid into the enclave? I'm not in a position to comment on these reports, Lina. What I do know is that UNRWA, the agency I work with, which is the largest humanitarian actor on the ground in Gaza and one of the oldest and most credible uh, players on the ground, that UNRWA needs fuel and we need it urgently. We need it today because if we do not get an urgent shipment of fuel today, we are going to be on the verge of making very tough decisions that will impact the lives of people. So we need we need a shipment of fuel to come into the Gaza Strip as soon as possible. Israel has ordered Gazans to evacuate to the south where a humanitarian zone has been created. Uh, but as you've said, no place on the Gaza Strip is deemed safe. And even that order seems unrealistic. In fact, the UN has repeatedly called on Israel to withdraw the evacuation order to the south, saying mass movement of such will result in devastating humanitarian consequences, not to mention for those who are hospitalized, it sounds like a death sentence. What is your take on the evacuation order? Lina, we have to be very careful with our reporting. There is no humanitarian zone in the Gaza Strip. Uh, there has been an evacuation order issued by the Israeli authorities, and UNRWA referred to that order when it was issued as horrendous, in the words of the UNRWA Commissioner General. A lot of people started to move south, to the south of the Gaza Strip, However, no place is safe across the Gaza Strip, across the Gaza Strip. As you mentioned, Mr. Uma, predating to the current war in the region, the Gaza Strip had already been besieged by Israel, bordering Egypt since 2007. It was already difficult for Gazans to flee the enclave even before the war. The strip of land is blockaded by what's called an iron war. A wine wall with only the Rafah crossing left open. It's also been dubbed the world's largest open air prison. How does the UNRWA perceive this? The humanitarian situation in the Gaza Strip, even before the war started, has been very, very dire. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, 1.2 million people, relied on assistance from UNRWA just for food. Mm -hmm. The poverty rates are um, among the highest in the region. Four in five people live in poverty. Unemployment rate uh, is, is a a highest among um, young people, among the highest in the region. People did not have jobs or access to the basics already before the war. It's been one, six, 16 years that Gaza has been under a very tight blockade. And then now it's uh, turned into a territory that is under very tight siege. The people of Gaza are being strangled by this siege and they are being punished. This war may last for weeks, if not months. Israel warned of a long war, vowing to completely destroy Hamas's military capabilities, and the damage is done to civilians. What message would you like to convey to our listeners and, of course, the global community regarding the urgency of the situation on the Gaza Strip? The United Nations is calling and continues to call until it happens for a ceasefire to spare more, more lives of being lost everywhere. We need a ceasefire and we need a ceasefire right away. And until then, we need those humanitarian convoys that are being sent into Gaza to be larger in terms of the number of trucks, to be more regular, to be more sustainable, and to include fuel on them. Ms. Tuma, thank you very much for joining us. And I am deeply sorry for your loss. You told us about losing some of your colleagues. That must have been incredibly difficult news. Thank you so much, Lena. Thank you very much. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.